Welcome to the Lounge Lizards podcast. It's so good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever else we feel like getting into. My name is Gizmo, and tonight I'm joined by Rooster, Pooba, Senator, Pagoda, Grinder, and Bam Bam, a full house of lizards. And our plan is to smoke a cigar, drink some scotch, talk about life, and of course, have some laughs. So take this as your third official invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. Plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke a New World cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you our formal lizard rating. We'll also answer a listener email and chat about a variety of other things for the next hour. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we pair a 14-year-age Balvany Scotch with Padron's 1964 Anniversary Series in Exclusivo Maduro. I would say a uh, pretty foundational cigar for the Lizards tonight. Wouldn't, and, you th- wouldn't you say? Yeah. Kind of fitting with everybody here. No right? doubt. Yeah. And, uh, Senator, this was your choice. This was near and dear to my heart. Uh, just a little, I guess, history on the, the cigar. So the, the anniversary series was introduced in 94 to commemorate the company's 30th anniversary the line has 16 Vitolas, which I actually did not realize. I did not know there were that 16 many. 16 Vitolas. Uh, this is the Exclusivo. I think universally in this room, this is probably all of our favorite Vitola. It's basically a Robusto. It's, it's 50 ring gauge, uh, five and a half inch stick. Um, a cigar that, for me, introduced me to great cigars. When I was smoking mediocre cigars, I'll never forget my, my first boss who... Uh, I, I guess you can say I got a little taste of the Mad Men days when we would actually light up cigars inside the office. And he gave me one of these. I had never had a Padron before. And after two puffs, I was hooked. This became my favorite cigar. I think all of us are lucky to smoke a lot of great sticks at this point. And this is a cigar I come back to practically daily. And I cannot see ever falling out of my rotation. <laughs> and I, I think a lot of guys will probably. It's a beloved, beloved cigar this group what are you guys getting on the uh on the nose i don't know if there's a cigar that we're all as familiar with as we are this one I mean, right we're cutting yeah let's cut it see what we got on the cold draw here no gizmo cut please Mm. Mm. A, a little cedar You're getting cedar cedar and there's an earthiness i yeah. feel like on yeah. the cold draw and if yeah. you even smell the wrapper that's really nice it's yeah. awesome yep yeah it's like a familiar friend all right boys let's light it <clears throat> <clears throat> So we always smoke the Maduros. Senator, I, you know, you said there were 16 variations of this. Does that include the natural and Maduro, or are there 16 that each have a natural and a Maduro? It's a good question. So it looks like there are... Here's the list of the different Vitolas. There's the A, which we've talked about. That's the big one, yeah. The Bellicoso, Corona, Diplomatico, Exclusivo that we're smoking... Hermoso, Imperial, Monarca, Number Four, Pyramid, Presidente, Principe, Soberano, Superior, Toro, and Torpedo. So there's, there's a lot. Wow. And each of those has a Maduro and a Natural. That's exactly right. It's crazy. Yeah, what's a, it's a great line. Now, the tobacco is aged four years in the 64 line. The 1926 series is aged five years. That's really the only difference between the okay. two, which I actually didn't know until just preparing for this. I, for some reason, always thought this was five and that maybe the other was seven. It's only a year apart, the two. I didn't series. know that until tonight. But different tobaccos, though, right? Presumably, yes. Because 1926 no, but Patrons has... Patrons are, Patrons are Nicar- the, these are Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan puros. Right. There, there's a rumor, though, that the, uh, the, the rapper's actually from Mexico. There's a... Pretty big standing rumor that's not confirmed by Padron and not denied. Yeah. But that they think they're... They they're don't Mexican. really tell you about the blend. They don't mm-hmm. really talk about it and they keep it pretty... Oh, and they also don't... They, they, aid, they, they aged the tobacco 
in piles, or what are they called? Pilones. 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 Mm. Right, thank you. Uh, they, in, which is a proprietary process to Padron. So for the listener who, who may not be familiar with the process, and I'm not, I'm by, not an expert on the process, but their, unique, their process is unique to Padron. I mean, the way they age their tobacco um, is proprietary, and I don't think a whole lot of people know exactly how they do it or everyone would be doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's certainly, they stand out because of it. Yeah. Interesting, Puba. Yeah. So for, a listener asked me earlier today, how does everyone cut their cigar in a room? Oh, so we're, all, right. we're all cutting flat cut here. Always. I think True. everyone's got a straight yeah, cut. Straight right? cut, yeah. Yep. Straight cut, yep. It's actually a good question to it ask question. while we're smoking a Padron because Absolutely. this cigar... Unlike most, you want to just just get the edge of the cap off this cigar. Exactly. I mean, the way these box press padrones are are made, <clears throat> you could almost take your fingernail and just peel off the cap at the top. Where other cigars, you've actually got to take a little bit of that sure. off. Yeah. Um, just very unique about padrone. Obviously, yeah. we good had point. to teach Gizmo this, but you know that, that's what <laughs> lizards are for. Senator, yeah. very good point, well, Senator. Well, you know, a lot of a lot of people, and I did this for a while, but I think just out of laziness. I don't like to carry an extra tool with me, but if I have a punch uh, handy, I'll often use a. I'll almost always use a punch on really? a on a on a padrone. Yes, because it's it's perfect. Yeah, it's going to work for, every it, time. It's going to work. It's going to work uh, every time, sixty percent of the time. Nice puba. Just like nice, like Sex Panther by Odeon. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, so I have one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a great reference. Rooster, I have a question for you. <laughs> yes, sir. Rooster, yes. when did you start smoking the Exclusivos? How long have you been smoking? 1964. 64. <laughs> <laughs> we'll learn about well, that, that whole a little while. <laughs> that, that I would say in age. the mid-90s. Mid-90s, okay. There was a long debate about this because I think at some point, you know, we're going to we'll certainly have episodes where we go through each of the lizards' favorite cigar, and obviously for for me, this this has always been it. Um, but the debate was Rooster, who's the elder statesman among the lizards, saying that he's had this cigar uh, far earlier than I first <laughs> smoked one of these. But I my my what response. Year? What year it's did not you a start? So what year, Senator, but, did you smoke this cigar? Oh, first? That must have been 1982. Oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Probably 2010. 2010. All right. So I, yeah. Rooster's got you so beat. So Rooster, he has me uh-huh. beat. But but the reason we had this debate was I said to him, well, I, everyone here, in fact, here's the story. So when we all first met, a number of us at, at one of the lounges that, that we were members of, someone sitting next to me asked, do you only smoke Padrones? And I said, well, why would you ask me that? I said, I, of course, I smoke other cigars. And he said, well, I feel like I always see you sitting in the lounge with a Padrone 64 Exclusivo. And I said, well, that's my favorite cigar. Now I said to Rooster, I can probably count on both of my hands the number of times I've actually seen him light up an Exclusivo. So Uh-oh. I said, it, you may have had it before me, but you but, certainly don't smoke it very often. Uh, Gizmo, the gauntlet has been thrown down. I, I, I could tell. So, so I think Bam has known Rooster probably longer than all of us. Uh, would you say that you've seen Rooster smoke a lot of Exclusivos or just so, a few? Can, um, I, can um, I respond? Hold on. I want to hear Bam. No comment. Ah, <laughs> there we go. It comes out. It comes out. Rooster has a pile of cigars that Bam wants, so, so he's not. But, so, oh yeah, you better believe it. So my, my response to that is, I've had a lot of Padrones. Padron is one of my go-to brands as well. It might not just be the Exclusivo, because I used to prefer the 1926 series. I like that a lot because I feel that 1926. It's got a little bit more kick, strength, mm-hmm. more kick, more oomph to mm-hmm. it. So I used to prefer that. But this is a great stick, yeah. especially after smoking a lot of uh, Habanos, a lot of Cuban cigars. You go back to this oh, and you're like, phenomenal. wow. Phenomenal. Phenomenal yeah. act after. You yeah. know, yeah. It, so, And to your point, I feel like I associate the 26 line with Rooster. I feel like the the... The cigar that you probably consume more than anybody, certainly more than any of us, is the Padron 90th. 
Yeah. Right. That's yes. a full great, body great cigar. breakfast cigar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For you. <laughs> but that's Rooster's that's, that's palette, a, right? You love steak. full, that's a full, full body, full body. Yeah. 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 So what are you, uh, what are you guys getting on this? I know we've talked about this cigar so, so, so many times, but yeah. let's yeah. share with the listener, like what, uh, it, let's, you know, pretend, I guess that it's our first time smoking. Uh, what are you getting? No sawdust. No sawdust. No, no sawdust on this. Grinder? Do you have a... Getting some chocolate. Nice little chocolate. Deep chocolate, right? Like dark, 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 dark chocolate. Like cocoa. Like 98% cacao. <laughs> cacao. Cacao. And it has that, it has that, it has that earthy quality, I think. Yeah. That, it's just so smooth. That, and, yeah, and it's very smooth. Um, it, it, the cigar has a lot of merits that go even like... The performance of of all Patrons are fantastic. Uh, but this this is a re- inconsistent the consistency, right? Uh, this is a really versatile smoke. I mean, you can have it almost any time. I mean, I don't I don't smoke it first thing in the morning, but certainly after lunch, I, I could. It's the best outdoor cigar in the history of the world in cigars. You can smoke <laughs> this thing in a in a tornado, and and it'll it'll burn yeah. like a razor it's I mean, durable it's very durable and it's durable because that maduro wrapper and the flavor it, it's like you can if you're riding in a golf cart at full speed if you need to put this down in the grass or something for a second and pick it up or and it's just and it, the combustion of the cigar it produces a lot of smoke it produces a lot of rich flavors those chocolate flavors padrone flavors there's sweetness to the cigar too. Yeah, there is. I it's mean, like a yeah. sweet and sour yeah. balance. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. balanced. It's kind of sweet and it's spicy and chocolatey and and just really delicious. I mean, I'm not a big guy who can pull notes out of. It's not one of these kind of like where you like light up a Havana and you're like, oh well, this is a floral cigar. Or this is a or this is a baking spices. This is like a Padron, and I I don't know how to put like pinpoint it, but it exemplifies like really what a Padron should taste like. It's, it's like, and then there's the 80th, which is like a step up from this, which is even right. more, it's like this plus, it's like this plus plus. Yeah. So I just think this Maduro wrapper and whatever they do creates a cigar that's really smooth, really smokable. And, and the quality is, is of the roll every time, every time, mm-hmm. every cigar you it, ever buy it's always perfect it is always perfect it is always perfect that's the thing the consistency yeah. i feel like all of us have talked about this at one point or another i think and, and tell me if you agree or disagree but for me padron is the most consistent cigar made never period. had a bad one has yeah. anybody had ever one. had a padron that was clogged no never never, never. i've never had or a burned clogged, weird or yeah never davidoff never sure, davidoffs one. i've had that are that that burned Funky is funk. Uh, uh, particularly, like we did, I think we discussed it on one of the previous podcasts. You know that that Toro shape in Millennium. You know, it's just it doesn't smoke properly. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, not yeah. just once, not just out of one box, but you're like, this just doesn't perform right. Yeah, cannot then, go with the Toro on it, that stick. Yeah, no. and you just you try to store it differently at different humidities. You dry box it. You do whatever. The thing just doesn't smoke right. I've never pick, picked up a Padron any of them and have them smoke funny by the way even the thousand series stuff which um i don't smoke anymore but um but those the for money for value those are you know if you're a casual smoker those are great if you're a casual cigar smoker the thousand series padron cigars if you're just a guy you want a nine dollar ten dollar stick however much they charge for them i don't think they're much more than that um really Uh, you know what with a cup of coffee and, you know, you're doing your thing and you're a casual cigar smoker, maybe you smoke two or three cigars a month and it's not just, it's not like a full-on hobby. That's a hell of a cigar. Yeah, I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought up this sort of value and price point because when, when friends of mine ask me for recommendations, I'm going to a cigar shop, what should I pick up? A lot of my friends will say, I don't want to spend more than 15 bucks a stick. And this retails, I think, what, 14 15 a stick? It, yep. Yeah, it's yeah. anywhere. I think if you're buying About it online, Senator, you're going to get it for 13 bucks. And then mm-hmm. if you're buying it in a shop, paying whatever state tax you may be paying in your respective 
uh, market, you're probably going to get somewhere at be, you know between and, thirteen and sixteen. And that's where I feel like just dollar for dollar, the single greatest value for me in a cigar is this stick. Yeah, I don't think true. for fifteen, fourteen, even thirteen online, there is any cigar that's as satisfying at that price point as this. Absolutely cigar. agreed. So yeah, absolutely I agreed. so I just bought another box of these, and I'm not like a. I mean, uh, Giz, I know you. You know, Giz is is part of the reason why we call him Gizmo. <laughs> it isn't just because when you throw water on him, he turns into different stuff. Like a gremlin, uh, or he has bad reactions to certain things, and then things happen. Uh, but he's all, he, or, or, or maybe he's a little salty. Yeah, uh, it's none of those things that that he actually comes with instructions, um, like a gremlin. Yeah, and but, you need you need a container of kitty litter next to him. But but he's great at a lot of things. One is he he, he produces this podcast, which which we're grateful for. Um, and he's great with technical things and figuring things out and creating fans for humidors and electronics and you name it. But he's also really resourceful and he finds prices online. So I'll tell you what I paid. What did I pay on Atlantic with the VA with the VIP? Um, your order has shipped three. Oh, boy. Are they in? Around 290 or something, yeah. It, well, landed. I want to say they were three fourteen. The so tax landed. Tax, you, you can find man. them even cheaper than that. That's what. I, well, that you know. That's what. Well, that's 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 my point. What my my, my point is is that I, I think I paid landed three fourteen or something like that just this this week, and they shipped yesterday. But you get them even cheaper than that. Yeah, I I, I think the last box I got was probably about three weeks ago. I got it for about two seventy five. Landed. Landed. Which is a great price. Yeah. That's an excellent price. It is. I also want to say something about Maduros generally, because we're all smoking the Maduro, and I think a lot of us smoke Maduros. I, I've encountered so many people that are that mm-hmm. expect a Maduro, because the wrapper is darker, to be a really strong, full cigar mm-hmm. that isn't for them. And so in the Padron line, they would gravitate toward a natural wrapper and when you, I've actually given these out and friends have tried them that normally wouldn't smoke a dark Maduro wrapper, there's a big fallacy, I feel yeah. like, among cigar smokers that mm-hmm. darker wrappers equal stronger cigars. And that's yes. not at all the case. That's true. This is one of the smoothest deliveries of flavor in a cigar you can find. Padrones, to me, I actually prefer the natural wrapper on most, most, most of the lines. Why is that's that? That's controversial. <laughs> I, yeah <laughs> i don't know it just hits my it rings my bells a little more than than this maduro like when I, the maduro when i think of maduro that i love the drew estate maduro to me they make a fucking phenomenal maduro wrapper and i really you know every time i have that cigar t52 you know liga privada fantastic and it, it has a it has a it has a very sweet great taste and i think that's a Phenomenal cigar, and I love this Maduro wrapper, of course. But when I when I smoke Padrones, they're so robust that that natural is just it's it's right in my power alley. It's not too much. Um, it's it's it, you know it, it it works for me. You know, I'm not a big fan of Drew Estates or Liga Pravada, but be that as it may, I, I noticed that the the look on your face when you were condescendingly <laughs> snarkily smirking as I was saying that. I, 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 saw it too. And, I had to get up and pour another drink because yeah. I love you so much. And, 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 you, sh- you shook the it off. Coming, well. The words coming out of your mouth don't align with the, the, the type of person Puba you are. Puba needed which to is step away person. for a moment. Uh, <laughs> he did. But, he literally stepped he away. Stepped away. <laughs> he was like, he had to gather himself. I had to go pour. He was going to say something bad. <laughs> I had to go pour another drink after he, that. He did. He, he did the ten second rule. The, the editorial on Drew Estate, but anyway. Uh, uh, but uh, but but no, but look, we smoke a lot of habanos. Those are all natural. Those are all natural True. wrappers, and yeah. and and uh, we love Cuban cigars. Uh, uh, but but where I was going was was uh, was the the torpedo in natural. I, Gizmo, you bought a box of these, and you gave me one of those, and it was excellent. And then you gave me another one, the Corona, the Corona, yeah. And they were they were both outstanding uh, cigars, and you know you smoke so many of these Maduro uh, padrones and it, these these ex- and you get used to that. You go, well, what's gonna get what's gonna what's gonna be better than this? You know, you get into like a routine and you get into your habit, and you know, I gotta tell you, you smoke one of those natural torpedoes for whatever reason, it's better 
and I don't know why, uh, but it's it's much better than than the natural version of this 1964 uh, Exclusivo. You know, it's like here, take this torpedo, try it. And I was like, you know, this is pretty. This is really really good. Maybe that's why you know Padron has that you know 16 by two, you know, um, all those different vitolas in two different wrappers because they're getting every flavor of the rainbow, you know, you know, a, a natural and a torpedo is better than I'm just, you know, I'm just, for example, might be better than a natural exclusivo, for example. But for you know, me, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was much, like I would buy a box of those. Yeah. And you know what um, I love about the 64 line too is, you know, when I'm standing in front of my humidor and I want to make a decision on what I'm going to smoke, a lot of the times it's the Exclusiva, right? That's the same for a bunch of us. But to reach for a Torpedo or to reach for, you know, the Corona or, or another size in the line, every one of those cigars gives you something that's a little different, even yeah. though it's in the mm-hmm. same line. Mm-hmm. And I think that mm-hmm. even in the same wrapper, even that same Maduro wrapper, it gives you something a little different. And I think that it makes the line very dynamic, but it's so consistent, like we talked about. It's so brilliantly consistent. Yeah. It is, and even though we're all saying that obviously this cigar is full flavor, it's so smooth the delivery that I feel like, would you give one of these to someone who's never smoked a cigar in their life? Absolutely not. But for friends who occasionally smoke cigars that I've given this stick to, they're, they're, they all love it. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like it's actually very versatile in the sense that you don't have to be right. someone who smokes you know, 100%. several sticks a, a, a week or, or even a day to enjoy this. I gave, I, I, had a, right. I had a friend who was asking me, he was going on a bachelor party recently. He said, he said, uh, Grinder, I know you smoke a lot of cigars. I know you have a good palate. I want to, this is a good friend of mine. I don't want to get cheap sticks, but I want a good cigar that is good value. And I, and I said, just do the 64 Maduro Exclusivo, right? And he, you know, all the, all the people he took these cigars to, they weren't big cigar smokers. But I asked him after the weekend, he said, it, you know, we, we bought a box. There was five of us. We went through the fucking box. We loved it. And they are not cigar smokers. Right. And like, it was, it was the best cigars. You know, all of us collectively said it was the best cigar we smoked. The, because I, I think there's your to say, right. Because it's, it's full flavor, but it's not full strength. Right. No. Like a 1926 Maduro in the same size, which I think is the number six. Six. Yeah. Right. That cigar, I can't smoke it. Same. Mm-hmm. It, I can't smoke. Mm-hmm. I can't smoke the number six, 1926 number six in Maduro. I remember buying some uh, at the lounge and saying, oh, I, I bought some singles. Mm-hmm. And I, I got halfway through one and I said, I can't believe the amount of cigars that I smoke that I just can't handle this. Like, mm. I really couldn't handle it. I was sweating. I was feeling nauseous. I had to drink, like, Coca-Cola and, and get some sugar. I was like, this is nuts. Like, I couldn't get through it. So yeah. and, and which, like, shocked me because <laughs> of the amount of volume of cigars we're able to smoke. I can't smoke that in so 1926 just in Maduro. Piggy, just to piggyback on you, Puba, since I've shifted from the Family Reserve to exclusively smoking the Exclusivo. This is the only Padron that I really smoke. I don't smoke any other Padrones except for this cigar for a it's reason. It's a shit cigar. It's, all, it's oh, awful. please don't say that. It's awful. Like, like I said, now, Rooster doesn't like this cigar. <laughs> when I go back to doing a family reserve on occasion, it makes me nauseous. How you good like is an, that an steak? Idiot? Come on, a family reserve? No, that's not a family reserve. Um, the family reserve, the 45th, 44, I loved. 44, 45, 46, yeah. So that 50. was my go-to, but I can't smoke that any longer because my palate has What's changed. What's wrong with it? It's awesome, but my palate has shifted to this Exclusivo profile. And I'll, I'll tell you something. For me, you know, everyone here knows I love the Millennium. The Millennium was a cigar that got me into cigars. That's why it has a, a place in my heart. This little bastard cigar is right next to it. Yeah. And I've I've picked that up over the years. This the, is the late the in my life. It's a good good everyday cigar. It's yeah. This is yeah. A, you can oh, yeah. do this I, I cut every free. day. Can, I, I, I'm just gonna have it to interject. Should be in everybody's rotation. You can do this every day now. Um, every other day, you, right? Well, uh, this is for me an everyday cigar. No problem. No problem. And it's, it's, you don't smoke good, this every day. No, but I could. I do. I do. I you know I think exclusivos mean different. Things to different people, but for me, obviously, I think it was an introduction to a lot of the members and the and the lizard group as well. 
Uh, I remember Giz introduced me uh, to the exclusive. Um, I remember we used to do the V cut then, uh, Giz, if you remember. Yeah. And uh, fell in love with that. Meaning uh, such an easy smoke, such mm. an easy draw. I think if you're new to cigars and you want to try something a little bit more, you know, just slightly more bolder in a way, but... But the quality, but not too strong. Yeah, it is the easiest smoke you will have. You'll also smoke very it's, easy. It's draw. also a world class yeah. cigar. Yeah. It, you cannot find a cigar that's better made, that smokes better, that tastes better. In my opinion, at this level, than the Exclusivo. And the reason I, I just am in love with this cigar, and I, I love that Poover brought up the the 1926 line. For me, I feel the same way, in that the 1926 line, while it's aged a year more, it's more expensive. I think some people argue it's better for my palate. I actually think that it just delivers too aggressive a punch. Mm. I, I bought a little, a box of 10 1926 number six, because I think last year, the year before cigar aficionado had as one of their top five. And I said, all right, this, this has got to be pretty good. And I had one and I felt lightheaded and I smoked several cigars a day. I just, I didn't feel great smoking that cigar similar to how Puba felt when he had the same stick. And so I, I eventually, I, I had it in my locker at our lounge and I gave a bunch to Rooster and Rooster's like, what's wrong with these? Why, I don't why remember just... that. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave them to him because for the 26th line, he loves that. Like Rooster yeah. smokes the more? 90th. Do you have some more? I got rid of, I gave them all to you. <laughs> I, I gave them all to that. you. So not, the, you know, not to interrupt, one more thing, if I may. I mean, I cannot tell you, Puba, how well this Belvini Caribbean cask, it's 14 year. 14 years. 14 years. How delicious it is with this particular cigar. It really is. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's so. Uh, it's almost a perfect pairing. It's, it's, well, I believe that it's the scotch itself, to be honest. Now, I'm a McAllen 12 guy like we all are. We all it's are, like, yeah. It's like, you know. Except that, the Kirkland guys. Except, <laughs> well, hey, we're all, we, we're we all, like the Kirkland. Hey, we're all Kirkland guys on the boat. You know, Bougie. Uh, the boat. Uh, Double we, wood. We're, 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 Do you have a boat? We're, 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 <laughs> Do you even have a boat? You keep talking about a boat. Do you are have there, a boat? Are there bikinis on the boat? You guys know how big the boat is. Come on. Uh, Bam but, Bam needs to know. You guys know how big the boat is. Oh, the yacht. Yeah, you've all been on the yacht. But, mm -hmm. but, um, but in all seriousness, though, it's yeah, like uh, uh, that 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 Balvenie, it, it, it because of that rum cask, it give, delivers a little bit of sweetness that just pairs oh. great with I think any cigar similar to the previous episode when we reviewed the um, what was it uh, Chef's Senator, edition the the Chef's edition what was the Scotch uh, the Dalmore Dalmore the Dalmore cigar malt cigar malt, cigar malt, yeah. malt which is much more complex than this. Mm. Uh, but value for money, $79. Um, uh, I think that this is a, it, it's a world-class scotch that, uh, that would pair well, I think, with any cigar. What I love about the pairing, a sip right after a draw on this stick, the, the flavors you're getting, it's really spectacular. Yeah. It's I'm, enjoyable. As, I mean, I'm, I can't even describe it. It's very bullish. Very tasty. Very do you, bullish. Do you the dip the cigar in the scotch? No. 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 Is that a big no-no? That's a big no-no. Except Jesus Arnold. Christ. Jesus Christ. Big no-no. Well, Ar Arnold doesn't Arnold just does dip it. the cigar in, in the scotch. He pours tequila. tequila all over the cigar, so it's wow. which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. A listener, one of the, one a, listen, lunatic. a listener to this cast at, podcast asked that question. Do you dip your cigars? Do the guys in the lounge dip so, the cigar? And I say, he's hell a no. He's a lunatic who did steroids and yeah, humped his You don't his do name. that. He's a lunatic. Yeah, for the listeners listening, you do not <laughs> hey, do hey, this. Hey, hey, he's hey. a lunatic. He's a, he, don't disrespect Arnold. Uh, come on. He dumped the Kennedy. He dumped Maria Shriver. He, did, he dumped Maria Shriver, who, by the way, is who's smart, sophisticated, beautiful, yeah. and a Kennedy. Love is blind. For, he was in love with the maid. For with his, the maid. For an, his ugly maid, and he impregnated her. Ugly. Yeah, it, it reminds that. me of the Ben Stiller movie. <laughs> Google, <laughs> Google that. complete lunacy. Google that. I mean, he's a total <laughs> lunatic. So the <laughs> fact that he takes cedar spills. This is what tequila and cigar he, does to you. <laughs> you end up banging a maid yeah, while you're right. married to Maria Shriver. I banged the maid. I, mean, I, I, do it. I, do it. I went to her room and I banged her. <laughs> She, she was there. I'm from Austria. Hello, good morning. I'm going to bang you now. <laughs> good night. Good evening. <laughs> 
pour go, some tequila on me now. Now I'm going to pour tequila on my cigar. I saw that He's video. That, I, I saw that video cigar aficionado put out of him doing that, and oh, it bummed me out so much because I know there's guys all over just pouring, on, lost all respect, yeah, pour, yeah, pouring drinks all over their cigars. That's not something you do. That's not something you do. All right, so we're halfway through the exclusive. Most of us. Uh, what do you guys think? Mm-hmm. Smooth, Ooh. consistent, not much change in flavor. I think that's typical of uh, Padrones. Uh, right. Stays the same all the way through. Very good. Lots of chocolate, cocoa notes, deep, a lot of tobacco, earthy, like somebody mentioned earlier. Yeah, so dependable too. And I, if, if you're on vac- going on vacation, one well, sorry, sorry, uh, Pagoda, uh, uh, but if you're going on vacation, you're going somewhere. And as much as I love the Habana Sese catalog, and as much as we lo- I love Partagas and everything, else, if I'm going somewhere and I need to put something in my shirt pocket or in my suit jacket, and I need a, just a cigar on the go, guess what I'm taking? Yeah. The exclusive of Every time. And you know, the, I totally the agree. Wrap, the wrapper is kind of thick. It's not a thin, They're, fragile wrapper to, like a lot of the Habanos yeah, that we smoke. Yeah, very durable. They're fragile. Like, yeah. You know, they can peel off yeah. like this. It's durable. Very Do they have durable. these in tins or, or tubos? Just the no. 90th, I think. Comes I'm pretty in. sure no, there's, they there's make two, them in tins. There's two 1964s that come yeah. in tubos, the Soberano mm-hmm. and the Presidente. And nice. it's not a box. No, 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 that's Presidente. Not a tu- no, no, not a it's tubo. It's a beautiful tubo, there's by the way. There's absolutely a, there's is. a tin. And by the way, it's, it's an like a rectangular thing. tin. He's right. Of exclusivos? So it's so funny that, that really? Grinder just mentioned I never saw this. That. He's what? exactly right. So as I was looking up just how many Vitolas there are of this cigar, I see on Padron's website this photo of exactly this tin grinder just mentioned that holds five. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, why have I never seen this in any cigar shop? I've seen it at the former lounge. It, it sort of looks like the Partagas Capital tin that you had, oh, uh, Puma. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. But yet I've never seen it in a retail. Ha- I have to get my hands on that. I've never seen that. Well, Same. Yeah, just buy a couple and then just refill them out of a box and just be able so to go they, on the road they, with it. Yeah, I, it, I have seen it. Going anyway. back to the durability of the cigar just for a second, just commenting on what Puba said and what Rooster said, the skin, the thickness of the skin. I, I sit outside on a breezy day and still get every flavor on this cigar. Or inside, it's much more uh, pleasurable because you're getting more of the flavor because the wind is not smoking it for you. But it's very durable. Any, it's a durable stick anywhere, in or out. Well, that's the, I mean, Puma, very right? healthy smoke. Yeah. 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 Very, yeah. yeah. I think it's an easy... So go to smoke. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the same thing we said about the chef's edition, too. Not a single person has touched the cigar up, you know, no. almost, oh, no. what, 40 oh, minutes no. in? We can't yeah. stop puffing on a thing. The, yeah. the burn is always perfectly Perfect. yeah. even. The combustion. The ash just holds on for dear life. I mean, Puba's comment earlier about you could smoke this in a tornado, I think perfectly yeah. sums up yeah, it's yeah, a great yeah, just how it. strong the construction is on this cigar. Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and by the way, and for the for the smoker out there, sorry, sorry, Rooster. Yeah, the, right. And for the smoker out there who like doesn't keep a humidor at the exact humidity that it needs to be, like with Cubans, you need to really kind of monitor that to to get a good burn sometimes and you need to keep probably keep your humidor at more like 65. I mean, with these, honestly, you could probably, you know, you could, there's a range that you can store you, these at. You're going higher on you this. You know, you, yeah. could, you could store them at a higher humidity. Yeah. They're yeah. still going to smoke rate. You can go on vacation. You could probably go on vacation for a week and not even keep these in a humidor. Keep right. them in a plastic bag. They'll be fine all week yes. in the hotel rooms. And, 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 and you will be totally 100% fine. They just tend to just, you know. <laughs> they're always there. They're, 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 they're just consistent and good. Rooster. So, no, I was going to say, Gizmo, maybe you want to talk about the Miami trip when we went over yeah. and met uh, Jorge Padron. Yeah, it was a special trip, and it actually plays well into smoking this 1964 tonight because so uh, Rooster and I were in Miami separately, and we met up for a day, and we decided to do some lizarding, as we always do. And uh, <clears throat> we went to the Miami distribution center, and I don't want to call it a factory. I want to call it a distribution center because they don't do any... They don't make them there. They don't make any cigars right. there. What they do is they send them in bulk, they air freight them in bulk, and then they literally pack them. And it's brilliant to me because you think, you know, uh, I'm sure at Davidoff they have massive headquarters and big C-suites and everything else like we would think of a, a big company that does the kind of volume that these guys do. And Jorge Padron, the, 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 the son of the founder, Jose Padron, sits in the middle of the 
distribution center. The sales folks are right around him. And 10 feet to his right are the team of people who literally pack every single box of Padrones mm -hmm. to send out to retailers. And, and it was so unbelievable to me that this guy is the CEO of one of the greatest cigar companies in the world. And he sits 10 feet from every cigar that's packed in a Padron box. Well, he also sits in the same desk that his father sat on. Amazing. You know, that's where he sits. So he's surrounded by, it's all family and maybe a couple of uh, employees that have been with him for, you know, 20, 30 years. Not a lot of employee turnover there. No, no. It's a can, very you guys, can you run. talk about how, can you talk a little bit about, because I think it's interesting. I was interested by the story when you guys came back from the trip. Can you talk a little bit about meeting uh, Jorge Padron and a little bit about going back there and your conversation with them? Because I thought it was fascinating. And the, I think it exemplifies, um, your interaction with him exemplifies the family-oriented kind of brand and the pride mm -hmm. that they take in their business and how they run it. It, it was incredible. I mean, we st so, so when you walk in Padron, they have their headquarters and immediately to the left, there's a small retail store. And at one point, you know, some, some point down the road, we'll smoke the, uh, the cigar that you can only buy there, which is the Padron Black Label 100, which is a, a little, uh, little torpedo. Phenomenal we'll, cigar. We'll, we'll smoke it. Bam won't. Bam is banned from smoking that cigar when we Bam do it. Bam is banned. He will sit here and watch us for an hour while we smoke that cigar. Uh, I will, and I'll light up an exclusivo in his place. <laughs> anyway, we'll get to that sometime down the road. But uh, So we met his nephew. His nephew was running the retail store at the front. Uh, Rooster and I decided to you know, start digging around and understand the cigars that they had there and whatnot. We purchased a couple things, and then we kind of slyly asked him, because you know we're talking middle of COVID, so they weren't doing tours. They weren't inviting you into the back to meet anybody, you know, et cetera. So we convinced his nephew. He was very kind and nice and, and invited uh, Rooster and I to go back and, and tour the center. And it was amazing. We got back there and we're walking around. And, and then he immediately introduced us to his uncle, Jorge, um, the CEO, as I mentioned. He was very busy. He was so busy. Took some but, time out. And, uh, but he stood up. He said, I have a 2 o'clock call. I'm so glad you guys came in prior to my call. And he stood there with us for about 20 minutes and asked us about what we like about Padron, what cigars we like, our preferences, uh, you know, how long we had been smoking. Obviously, Rooster had some great stories of, of his history with Padron because he's been smoking them a lot longer than I have. And what was amazing was first he asked one of his family members to go get us each a cup of coffee. So we each get a cup of coffee, which was espresso. Corta, great, great cortado, espresso. Cortaditos. Was it made through a jura? Was it to Rooster's uh, <laughs> specifications? Well, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't wasn't quite out of a jura, but or, or, hey, Padron is going to hear it was this. Out of He's going to say that fucking guy didn't like my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee was very good. The cigars are better. So we uh, he ended up taking us in the humidor, and you know, Padron right now, just like everybody else is running on a near, like, you know, uh, uh, immediate turnover. Like, there, the, the humidor was fairly empty. There weren't a ton of cigars in the humidor that were And it was kept very cool. Out. Remember how cold it was? Yeah, he was keeps, it? they said they keep it, like, right around 50s? 50s or 60s yeah, or something. It was very cold, very and there was, like, a refrigerator. Yeah. And uh, we were talking to his nephew, and Jorge said, you know what, hold on one second. And he goes in the back in a corner, and he starts digging And he's gone for, like, 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes he's, he's gone. gone. Yeah. And this is after we explained, you know, we love the Exclusivo. We love the 1926 80th anniversaries, our favorite cigar. Jorge Padron came out with two 1964 cigars in, in yellow cellophane, cell yellow yeah. cellophane because they were so old. And he said, these are prototype 1964 cigars that we had tested out about 10 years ago. And we never released them. That's fascinating. I didn't, I didn't hear this story. Gave, That's awesome. Yeah, he gave... Rooster and I each one of these prototype 1964 cigars completely shocked me. I was completely blown away. Did you smoke that? I did, and I still have it. Oh my oh, god! Wow. I, I smoked I it. I smoked it that, that afternoon. I think. Yeah, I. I when I came I back, have a, <laughs> impatient. I'm, I'm, I have a different patience. <laughs> I'd like to hear about that, Rooster. Oh, cigars are meant to be good. consumed. Very good. I know. I'm going. I'm going to smoke it probably on my birthday or something. But nice. It was, uh, you know, to Puba's, you know, question about his kindness and generosity and the time he spent with us. He did not have to stand there and meet two strangers, two smokers. <clears throat> we could have been anybody but he really took the time as if we were old friends to uh to stand there and spend the time with us and one was, day he's really gonna amazing. be on this podcast absolutely we're gonna invite him absolutely that's that's quite 
And That'd you know be what quite I the event. You know what I found interesting too is do you know what Jorge Padron's favorite cigar that they make is? No. He says the cigar he smokes the most is the Family Reserve number 45 in natural. Wow. Interesting. Which I, which I found interesting. Very. Yeah. But it was a, it was a great day and you know, I know Rooster and I still talk about it. It was such a such an honor and a pleasure to meet him. I mean, obviously we we smoke so many of his cigars, but uh just a just Great a brilliant, guy. Very brilliant, hospital. brilliant day. So, nice. so anytime yeah. you guys want to knock knock me for smoking fucking natural <laughs> cigars from Pajon, I'm gonna say, well, the boss smokes natural. That's so fair. <laughs> That's fair. I've got no that argument there. That's a good rebuttal. So fun, funny thing on Padron's history, did you know that they actually started in Miami, not Nicaragua? I did not know that. I did not know that so, either. So uh, this was crazy. I, I mean, I'm I'm literally I'm just reading this. And in 1964, they founded the company in Miami. They actually, what they were rolling and making was a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. In 1970, they moved the company to Nicaragua and started using exclusively Nicaraguan tobacco, which I, I never knew. Were they doing anything in Cuba before they uh, moved from, were they into cigars at that so, time? Or? So they were. There's actually a great, Jose Padron, the original founder, so Jorge's father. So he he's, was born and raised in Cuba. And his family, his parents, ran a tobacco farm in Cuba. The farm, naturally, was controlled by the Cuban government. And he clearly was not making enough money to build a cigar empire. So the whole, ha the Padron hammer, which is their logo, his friend gave him a hammer and Jose became a carpenter. And he earned enough money being a carpenter that allows him to raise $600 to start his own cigar brand and business. And so he left Cuba and went to Miami and started Padron and then eventually years later moved it to Nicaragua. And, and that's, I feel like, what really kicked off the Nicaraguan yeah. boom of cigars. It's we, a really amazing story. And we story. saw that hammer. That hammer is on display. It's on display there. in the lobby. Distribution oh, wow. center. That's wow. So cool. Oh, really? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that I, that I think is interesting, too, again, going back to the 1964, is so when, when Jorge came into the business in the early 90s, the 1964 line was actually Jorge's first real significant contribution to the line. He went to his father and he said, we should start aging tobacco, you know, preserving tobacco, putting it aside for a future release. And that is actually what perfect timing for the, the early 90s, mid 90s cigar boom was releasing the cigar. And then, you know, once they started showing it off at the trade shows and whatnot. Well, the did brand he, completely blew up. Did he up. not introduce all the Family Reserve lines? He did. And, the uh, Family Reserve came in the early 2000s, and I think the 1926, maybe a little before that. Right. But uh, there was there was a, a good period of years that it was just the 1964. And the Exclusivo was the first cigar that they released in the 1964 what, what are, line. What, what's the significance of 64 and 26? 64 was when the, uh, the company was started. 1926 was the year that Ho uh, Jose Padron was born. Uh, mm. And yeah, so that's how they do that. And the so the family reserve, all of those numbers are uh, celebratory of various uh, you know milestones in the company and his birthday. So the ninetieth uh, in the nineteen twenty six line was released for his birthday, the eightieth, oh, wow. etc. So wow. it's and all I, family milestones and company milestones. And I believe that uh, nineteen ninety four was when the exclusive was born. That's correct. Yeah, thirty four. Yeah, the thirty thirty, 30 year anniversary. anniversary yeah. yeah. A year after Rooster was smoking them. Yeah, it's just a great company. Right it, from inception, Rooster. Yeah. Look at you. One of the, the thing that fascinates me um, as a supply chain guy is how they, one, they vertically integrate everything, which is no one does anymore. <laughs> and, well, a lot of these cigar companies do. But actually, no, not many do. But they vertically integrate. And then they fucking re they recycle the boxes. Like I have, I have four or five Padron boxes in my humidor right now. Some of, them, some of them are really banged up. They're not new boxes. When you get a Padron box, it's more likely than not, it's not new because they, they, they ship these boxes off to, to the B&M shops, right? And then they say part of the deal and part of the contract is you got you to send them back if you're selling Lucy's. And the Lucy's, you know, they, they sell them in the, in the shop and then they send the boxes back and they recycle them. And it, he's cutting out cost. And one of the reasons why you can get a, such a great cigar at such an affordable price is because he's taken that cost out. And instead of putting it in, in his pocket, which he could do, he's taken that discount and giving it to the consumer and saying, 
you're going to get this great value cigar at a discounted, uh, essentially a discounted price for, for what it's value. And we were talking about value earlier. They run the company with a consumer focus. And very, very they don't, they don't market. They don't, they, they don't necessarily market. They aren't paying big ad agencies. They're not taking, you know, massive, massive ads out in CA. You know, they're, 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 just, they're just letting it speak for itself. To your point about that, you know, when I was there, I, I certainly had a lot of pride in, in the money that I spend on the brand and the money that we spend. It's, it really is, for how large they are, it really is a family business. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm proud to support a company like that and a, and a cigar like that, not just because of the quality, but because of the story. And the one thing about the advertising that I think is interesting, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, they run the same ads every, every month in Cigar Aficionado. It's the same two-page ad. And the last line of every ad is, is something very similar to thank you. The last sentence is thank you for the trust that you put in the Padron family name. Wow. Yeah, they have a, it's a great ethos um, and a great message. Uh, and, but the thing is, they've earned that trust from, from, from the consumer. And that's, uh, you know, it's earned. And so they could, I mean, they, they, they you know, that's the, if for any brand, uh, earning, earning trust and establishing trust, it goes back to quality and it goes back to, um, consistency and they deliver, uh, every, every time, every time. So not, not, uh, uh, every time, 60% of the time, every time, 60% of the time, or is it 60% of the time it delivers every time? No, exactly. it's every, it delivers every time. A hundred percent of the time. <laughs> what? Okay. Pagoda. Yeah. So if you're, you're very, you're an ESG conscious consumer, I think this is a great brand to be associated with. Absolutely. I think the other thing I just love about the brand, and this is where I get critical of Davidoff. You don't see Padron every year come out with limited edition cigars and, some new gimmick with a really clever name. They make what they make, and that's it. And they do not risk ever compromising the quality of their cigars to come out with a bunch of new, flashy, limited releases. And that, that's one of the things I love. The, the packaging is not fancy. I mean, to Davidoff's credit, there are some boxes, the Year of the Ox, one of the most beautiful cigar boxes I've probably ever seen made. Padron doesn't want any part of that. They just care about the sticks in those boxes that as grinder set are recycled and that's it. And I just love the passion and commitment that that family has to the stuff they make. All, all you need is that, is that cursive Padron and the hammer stamped, like stamped on the fucking box. It can have dents in it. That's all you need to, to know you're going to, you're going to get quality. And what, a, and by the way, and, and from a lot of guys in this room are marketing guys. And uh, what do you, what, you know, what a better way you can have all the ad agency people in the world come in and tell you how to build a brand. They built it through hard work and through earning the customer's trust. And um, that takes effort. That takes, they, it's a roll your sleeves up kind of business that they run. And uh, what, a bet, what a great way to build a, a brand organically, um, you know, without the fluff, the, the kind of superfluous marketing messaging and uh, to, to, to Senator's point, the kind of thing that Davidoff engages in, which is a lot it's of... It's not just Davidoff. It's like, it's, it's, it's everything. everywhere. Oh, it's, yeah. well, it's everywhere. I mean, look at, look at Rocky Patel. I, I mean, mean it's every, know, every, qu- every quarter is like a new... Yeah, new Rocky stuff. Patel has a new band, that, a new thing, a new with this and that. It's, it's, it becomes ridiculous, right? It's like, it's like they've just done it through hard work and quality and just delivering a quality product, period. Yeah. And, and it's like, thank you for trusting us and thank you for trusting our family. Well, they've earned that. On trust, the other thing I love about Padron, this is the only cigar brand that I know of that does this. The, the, the label on any cigar is a standard label that they apply across that entire line, right? So if you get a Monte Cristo band, it's going to say Monte Cristo Habana if it's Cuban or if it's non-Cuban, it's not going to have that. And it's the same across that entire line. On Padron, they're so protective of the brand and so serious about trust. They've got the double wrapper, which the second wrapper, the second band on there, has a serial number that they print on every single cigar to make it so much harder to counterfeit. 
it's almost like, you know, you, you hold a $20 bill up and you can see through it to try to assess whether it's real or not. That second band is so hard to replicate and they produce a unique cereal for each one. I think there's just something really cool about how serious their commitment is to make sure that no one ever even attempts to counterfeit a Padron and, and, and in any way tarnish their That's name. interesting because you don't see that on any other cigar yeah. in the world. Very well, interesting. I think it's I think it's very clear. Puba said on the last episode when we did the Chef's Edition that we are not a Davidoff fanboy pod, uh, podcast. I think it's very clear that yeah. we are, in fact, a Padron fanboy podcast. Oh, no doubt no about que- it. Sure. No question about it. Gizmo, sure. I'm, I'm down to about a half inch now. Yeah. And uh, it's just as delicious on the first light. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful cigar. Absolutely. So uh, let's go to some listener email here for a second, and then Ooh, we'll do, our, uh, nice. we'll do our, uh, our, our formal lizard rating on the Exclusivo. So uh, Ed writes, after the last pod, I'm enjoying the podcast. Can you guys explain the origin of nicknames such as Bam Bam? Oh, boy. Puba, I so feel like Puba, you, you were the mastermind behind these. Do you, do you, wanna... just, you just want to go around the ring, Puba? Let's go around the ring. Let's start with Bam and go. So I will tell you, well, before you say anything, so a lot of guys have asked me the same question, and I, Puba gave me my birth name. He gave all of us, sir. <laughs> yeah, all of us are our lizard yes. name. You were yeah. born again. I was oh, born again. Our lizards, I'm our lizards born into shells. <laughs> okay, let me go into the. Come on, me, Dad. I didn't prep for this, but okay. Poppy. Um, I'm a puppy. Well, uh, <laughs> big puppy. He's a he's a formidable man, uh, Bam Bam. So uh, <laughs> he's a man. Mus- he, he's he has musculature. I'm moving uh, the mic away from my face. He has he has he's a formidable he's a formidable a man. Formidable man. Man. Would you he's say a he's a man bam? Well, yeah, and he's man a man. Li- yes, uh, he's a little bit rough and tumble. So um, I don't know. He he. It just uh, so bam, bam bam with the, thank you, ma'am. With, with bam bam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pagoda. Uh, uh, you know he uh so that's where that, that's where that came from he likes to go bam bam on a lot of things go ahead let it loose will you uh, go uh, ahead. Go yeah ahead. i mean i give you permi- there, i give you permission go ahead yeah he, he go he, you know he likes to he likes to swing a stick. <laughs> He's a good golfer. Go bam, bam. The, the say swinging. That. He's a good golfer. Thank oh. you, Rooster. Let's just let's just say that. I'll leave it at that. Oh, uh, okay. So let, all right. So uh, as we were <laughs> hanging out, you know. So in the lounge. So getting to to to, to grinder uh, in the lounge. Great. You know. So one thing about grinder is he's got like this crazy. Uh, he has a crazy, insane work ethic. So, uh, you know, I would show up at the lounge at like, you know, five thirty, six o'clock, and I'd say eight o'clock, eight, eight o'clock, whatever it was. When, how long have you been? Like, you're still on your laptop? And he'd be like, Yeah. And I'd be like, Okay. And then I'd show up the next time at the lounge, and I'd see him. And he's on his laptop. I'm like, What's up? He's like, What's up? And then he like wouldn't talk. <laughs> And he, 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 he wouldn't say anything. He's like super quiet. And I'm like, what's going on with this guy? And then I, I get to know him more and more. And he's constantly working on uh, uh, slide decks and deliverables uh, for, his, for his clients. So that's how he got the name Grind. I go, you're always grinding it out, baby. You're grinding. I'd say, <laughs> I'd sit down. I go, what you doing, baby? And he'd go, oh, he'd go, no, I'm working. I go, you're grinding. You're grinding. So that's how he got uh the grinder name, uh, pagoda. And then pagoda, pagoda. So pagoda, pagoda, pagoda's <laughs> name, pagoda's name is. Just hold pagoda. on, just make sure he doesn't have the knife, okay? Well, no, he does have the knife. So uh, um, th- th- there, there's a there's a scene in the Royal Tenenbaums. Um, so so great but, movie. But, 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 with, without giving too much away, but uh, but but pagoda was was born in India but raised in the UK and uh and uh he 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 has this wonderful accent and everything else and I, I don't know I just there's a scene in the Royal Tenenbaums and there's a character named uh the Wes Anderson movie and there's a character named Pagoda who's like Gene Hackman's I don't know Nem- sidekick nemesis slash, nemesis well no they're like <laughs> friends 
And Pagoda's this really nice guy, and he's this gentle guy, but then one day he takes out a Swiss Army knife, and he just stabs, <laughs> he just stabs Gene Hackman in the stomach with the Swiss Army knife, and he's like, you just stabbed me. Why did you just stab me? And because, you know, he, he's reserved, and the Pagoda character in, in the Royal Tenenbaums is like this reserved, pleasant, polite guy, but once in a while... He'll shank you. But he'll shank you, and that's exactly what. <laughs> and that's exactly Beware. what that's Pagoda all. will Beware. do. So that's how. So he's reserved and so polite, and but then once in a while he'll just come out and he'll just stab you with the Swiss Army knife. So that's how Pagoda got his <laughs> point. Name. Point of point of personal privilege, as the uh, as the socialists yeah. say. Um, the uh, I didn't really get the, the get the the nickname until I was shanked. Six, oh, can, can, can I tell, tell that story? Get can I, tell I was story? I was aggressively yeah. shanked yeah. by Pagoda. Can I, can I tell that story? Go ahead. Go All on. right. So we're at another cigar lounge that we frequent, and, and and I actually had a hard time understanding the Pagoda name because I hadn't seen the movie for this context. But after this story, I very quickly understood exactly why this was a very fitting nickname, and I I love it because that's one of the things I love about Pagoda is just. He's the happiest guy, and then he just has this these really witty, sharp, hysterical comments. And you just love these shanks. shanks. They're, 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 they're tremendous. <laughs> and so we're sitting there, and we're talking about, for some reason, just some of the worst cigars we've ever had. And Pagoda has no context of cigars that either Grinder or I are, are particularly passionate about or once really liked at all. And Pagoda sits there and he goes, I had this horrible cigar. And he goes, you know, I, I don't even consider myself an expert, but I just found it to be terrible. And he goes, it was this strange octagonal shaped cigar. And <laughs> it was this Placencia Alma Fuerte. It was just horrendous. I would never smoke this cigar again. And I'm sitting there practically on the verge of tears because at one point, one of Grinder's favorite cigars was the Placencia Alma Fuerte. Pagoda has no context to know this. And so he is sitting there <laughs> eviscerating this cigar. I'm in tears laughing. And Grinder is just sitting there trying to remove the shank from his side. And he's like bleeding out in the chair. I mean, it, it was just unbelievable. It, Senator, it wasn't even that. It was the fact that he kept coming back for more. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it, like, we got it. And then he was like, just so you know, it fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, my only defense was that that shape yeah. is not the shape that I like. No, fair enough. I, I didn't know that. that I, yeah. You know, my thought was I was just giving an honest opinion about a cigar I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I think uh, when you have an easy target. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Shank them. There's, there, there's a shank right there. <laughs> when you have, and, an, when you have so an easy subtle. target, shank they're, them. That's, that's why. It's, it's, it, it's the Swiss Army knife. It's not a machete. It's the small, it's like this, this small, like little, like fucking pinprick that it just see i would call them zingers but zingers, you know yeah. zingers don't work but we we're, we're using we're using the pagoda analogy yeah. and the knifing and all that stuff yeah. so anyway absolutely yeah. and, and 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 so then we come to to, to to the senator and the senator got his name because he's uh well one he's he's uh he's the most intelligent man in the room probably the highest iq um here he he he's an ivy ivy league educated guy and um, he uh, and he's he's got the silver he's got the silver silver tongue, tongue. and, and, he, does and, have and silver tongue. he has the silver tongue and so at at the former lounge that at the lounge that we used to belong to yeah, there were always kind of like polit let's call it um, uh, uh, politics that would go on uh, things that would happen. Um, let's just say we had a contentious relationship with management, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and you know, so we would we would discuss these things, and then we would we would say, well, what are we going to do about it? And and uh, the senator got his name because he would say, well, I'll leave it to me. I will take care of this conversation, <laughs> and and so. And he worked on Capitol Hill for a little while, and 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 has experience in, in 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 politics and things like that. So, um, uh, so that's how that's how the senator 
got his name because he's the senator. So it's we a would great, take great negotiator. We great negotiator. Great, and a great negotiator. I was about to say that. And, 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 and he delivers. So, and he delivers. And he delivers on that. In the the most, tongue delivers. If I may, senator always delivers. Yeah, if I may, in the most difficult situations that we yes. experienced at that place, we all just, uh, my head swiveled right to his chair. <laughs> hey, we didn't have to say well, we would basically bring up all the key issues and he'd well, be like no. i'm going to consolidate this now and but he would I'm get gonna, up i'm going to come up with on. a strategy and now i'm going to go negotiate this. senator would actually get up <laughs> get the owner on the phone yeah and set him in his place right so you could get extra 15 minutes extra 15 goddamn minutes <laughs> but, but the silver tongue or, would come Satur- out. or saturday, saturday, hours. saturday hours that's big yeah that's that huge. was big and Never no one was able before. to do that yes and, and, and then we get then we get to Gizmo. So Gizmo, one he looks like. So Gizmo, which wasn't his original name. No, no his right? original Opie. name was Opie because he kind of looks like Opie from uh, from the Andy Griffith Andy Griffith show, um, a little bit like Ron Howard uh, type look uh, as a boy, um, but <laughs> <laughs> as a young child uh, is Gizmo. So it was originally it was originally Opie. But then it then it migrated to Gizmo because when you when you when you put certain ingredients into this little gremlin, <laughs> certain things happen. <laughs> Kitty litter, yeah, as one. McCallan, McCallan twelve. Well, no, well, Shivas Regal and Shivas. Oh, oh god, Shivas eighteen. Oh, oh, that was probably so the, 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 the genesis of the, the genesis yeah. of it. So one night, one night. So one night we injected. Uh, well, we didn't, but 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 a, but a local business owner. Uh, with where we live, uh, injected a lot of Chivas Regal into 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 Opie, and force, that was force fed, force fed it to him, and that was when he uh, he uh, transformed, exploded. transformed and exploded uh, <laughs> with vomit. He had to do uh, payroll. He was yes. doing payroll. Yeah, he was doing at, payroll. At, at I 2 a.m. I did have to do payroll. I got to do payroll at, at 1 a.m. At 2 a.m.? Okay. At 1 a.m. I got to do yeah. payroll. All of a sudden, he's doing payroll. All of a sudden, he's doing payroll. Uh, but, but, uh, but, but if you put certain ingredients into Gizmo, uh, uh, it, like a gremlin, you know, like if you put a water, water on a gremlin, they, 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 they freak out. So, so And also, kind of Gizmo uh, ladders back to this notion that he's – He's, he's great a, with stuff. He's, he's great. a creator. He's a creator. He can he's, fix anything. He, he can makes fix things. Anything. Gizmo puts the geek squad at Best Buy to shame. Oh, it, it is ridiculous. Yeah. Just Absolutely. for some context here, no th- this was another name that no question. I, I, I sort of understood and I wasn't sold on. And then over time, I'm sitting there saying Puba just has this wisdom that he, he sees where all of us are heading. Because <laughs> with Gizmo, th- this is a guy who takes some big TV, TV. a 50-inch TV that is basically dead, and instead of throwing it out for it garbage, out, out for garbage, you know, all of us would have just thrown it out. It doesn't turn on. It doesn't work. Throw it and in the he lake. Replaces like the entire motherboard or whatever the hell it's called and gets the TV working. Yeah. This is a guy who creates with a battery and some other stuff that he, I'm sure, you know, procured and made in his own home to, to create a fan in his tower humidor and was actually making this for other lizards. Which is it now is for sale, by the remarkable. way. Remarkable. He can make a 1K TV into an 8K That's TV. Right. <laughs> co- so, so basically, net-net, he comes with instructions and he can follow net instructions. Net. <laughs> <laughs> like a gremlin. Can, can, we, can we make a motion awesome. to, uh, to say net-net on an ongoing basis? Net-net. <laughs> uh, so, Puba Poo- can't name himself. Can I, can I, can I at least give this Puba story? Oh, yeah. We close and we're all going to chime in. Absolutely. So, go ahead. So, Puba, we, we went through a, a few names that we were considering. I, I was actually a fan of the mayor uh, at first, but I think the two I achieved the, the same the thing. So one. the Puba is meant to be the grand Puba. Grand, grand Puba, Puba, right. Puba has a larger-than-life personality. He's, he's the, the most fun guy in the room. We go anywhere in the area we live, and everybody knows Puba. We walk in, we sit down, someone comes over. Oh, Puba. Puba, hey, haven't seen you in a while. Puba, just saw you on the golf course. How's the family? He knows everybody, everybody. It doesn't matter if they're running the security detail for the New York Yankees or if they own 10 restaurants in the area we live. He knows everybody. And, and it was only fitting to call the, the most legendary of lizards, <laughs> the, the Puba. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, name of honor. I have, I have Indeed. called him Mr. Puba from time to time. Flattery. Sir, Sir Puba. Sir Puba. I just call, I just Sir call him Puba. Puba. I just call him Puba. I like that better. It's Puba. He's been knighted. A yeah. lot of nights out. 
I'm sure that had something to do. <laughs> and then we have, and then Rooster, of course, Rooster is the elder statesman. He's 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 the uh, he's the oldest of the bunch, probably behind me and Bam, and uh, or ahead of me and Bam. And um, not by much. N- not by much. Um, but uh, but he's a you know. Uh, he's the he's the so i think rooster comes from like he's the he's the, he's, well, a he's, sage. He's, he's a sage he's a sage yes he he's the sage he's the red rooster he's from india so red uh red rooster he's just the red rooster more and brown more brown <laughs> okay fine whatever but you get the idea it's so, a shade of it's whatever yeah he, but but, he, but he's but, a reddish he, brown like a cuban he, rapper his, 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 rooster, his, his, rooster's uh, comments level us is that maduro us, is that maduro or I, I, I think bam is <laughs> yeah. exactly right there's, yeah, there's a does. there's a leveling in his commentary and it's Same you know already. a lot of it's based in i'm not going to call it a religion but it's a belief and it resonates from him, and it does affect us in a very positive way. I, I agree. I think there's Without a wisdom. A there's a wisdom very about good. Rooster. Very good. Senator. I mean, Rooster's yes. a guy who shares, you <clears throat> right. know, inspiration and, and quotes, and right. is always glass half full. And, and there's exactly. just something about him that I feel like is, there's is a really there's a presence we, there's a presence that uh, that that the Red Rooster. Exactly. Um, uh, exudes in any situation. And we He's love and we love that. And, about, and very that. high praise. We and love that about you. A lot of positive energy. Well, right. Sure. And also, and also, he's a guy who, if you if you if you're going to pick up the phone and call somebody, or uh, or if you're not feeling well, the first person to pick up the phone to call and see how you're doing is always the rooster. Ex- Just absolutely. don't ever cut him absolutely. off in traffic. <laughs> well, right, but that's also true too. See, like a rooster will there's like another side. And bite. He will do that too. Like there's he, another he's side. Got claws. He's, he's got, got claws. claws. He's got claws. You don't fuck with the rooster. <laughs> the, the, the other thing I'll say about the, the rooster, if, if and I think this comes with being the elder statesman and, and the wisdom that rooster has. If, if you need thoughts on power tools, if you need Ooh, thoughts on snow blowers, snow blowers, just and speakers anything. and speakers. Rooster, Rooster has is, is very prescriptive about yes. what is an acceptable brand and product to purchase and what Sounds, is not. He's experience. like a walking consumer report. Sound systems, no doubt. Most yeah. of the things that he recommends can be found at Costco, let's be clear. <laughs> and also the Costco self-professed guy. longest tenured smoker of the Exclusivo. Self-professed. Longest tenured, I'm willing to concede that. That no. is true. If I, we, if we, I were to sum up... Quantity, I have him beat. But longest tenured, I, I will concede. If I, if I were to sum up uh, ah. Rooster in a sentence, it, it would be, what's mine is yours. And uh, I mean that from a always, generosity standpoint. Always. And what's yours is mine. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whenever he acquires... And, and he is a master of acquiring aged oh. Habanos. It's incredible. And when he gets a box, he's not a guy that keeps it a secret... He throws it in his humidor, keeps it to himself. He walks in the room and he starts handing out cigars. So well, cigars are to be shared. Very generous, very kind. Yes, and, but and, don't piss him off. And the rooster philosophy mm-hmm. to be smoked immediately. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like of like of I said earlier, cigars are meant to be smoked. Yeah, and shared. And shared. And shared. And shared. And shared. Yeah. And shared. So yeah, he uh, goes R O T T right off the truck. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, like you know, I walked. I, I came. I came late to the to the pod today. And these guys were um, the the lizards had been uh, smoking one of the uh, nice selections that Rooster had recently procured and shared. Yeah. And um, we were about to light up the Exclusivo, and Rooster walks over. He's asking me about my family and my wife, and I haven't seen Rooster in you know a couple of weeks. And you know he went out of his way to 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 you know see how I'm doing, and then he pops open his 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 uh, box of uh, cigars, and says, "Here, this is what we've been smoking. I want you to try this." And I'm I. I I'll probably smoke it later, but I didn't even get to enjoy it with him. But he still was generous enough to say, I want you to have this. And- Absolutely. All right, boys. Ed, thank you for the question. Listeners, please do submit. I think it's time to give the Exclusivo our formal lizard rating. Uh, I think all of us are pretty close to done with it. So, Rooster, what do you give the Exclusivo? A one. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a, a nine. Pooba? I, you know, I have to, for what it is... Um, And these are not, again, for the listener, it's not comparative ratings. You rate it for what it is. It's a 10. Oh, it's a 10. The Exclusivo is a 10 for what it represents, for what it is, for what it stands for, is a 10. I got to say, Pooba did not influence me on this. I came in expecting to say nine. And all the stories and all the memories of this cigar, I am also going to give it a 10. 
It, it's so funny you say that, Gizmo, because obviously this is my favorite cigar, period. And I was inclined to give this a nine because there are some cigars that I think are slightly more complex and better. But I think Puba said it best for what this cigar is. It's a 10 for me. Wow. Pagoda. A 10, a 10, a 10. And once again, it means so much to me uh, to be smoking this. Uh, It was uh, actually, uh, I think, one of the cigars that uh, really uh, got uh, uh, me involved with the group as well. So it means a lot to me uh, for more than just smoking the cigar. It's an experience. It's something you can smoke in the golf course, in your home, outside on your deck. It is wonderful. It's a very, very easy smoke. It's a pure 10. Grinder. Uh, I'll go nine. Bam, bam. I am, my mind is spinning right now. Nine, a bunch of tens and another nine. I'm at a nine. Okay. Now, for what it is, you see, this is, this is, this is where it gets complicated. It's such a fabulous cigar. It could easily be a 10. But how, I'm challenging all of you, all of you 10, 10 numbers here. How can you put this in the same league as the 80th, which yeah, we all have I was designated? Thinking the same. I was question. exactly thinking the same. That's a great right. question. How do, we, how, do we, how do you place this so, at a 10? So can we first give the, the, the score? The, the average. The, yeah, so the, the average uh, is a 9.6, which is a strong recommend. Yeah. Very strong recommend. Even, the even with the um, chef's edition, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Can, can I respond first to this? Because yeah. as my favorite cigar, this was very hard for me. <clears throat> I've always said, to me, the Padron 80th, which is actually the 1926 series, but mellowed out where it's not, it's a, it doesn't kick your ass like no, some of the other 26. No, it's a refined, things. elegant stick. That, for me, has always been a 10, and I would usually say this is a 9. And I think Puba's framing of, it, it's about this cigar and not comparing it to anything else. Okay. And this is where you also, for, for me, just for my rating, I had to factor in dollar for value. And at $14 for this stick... Great the ROI. experience that it delivers, I, I mean, truly, if I could not smoke another, only one more cigar forever right. in perpetuity, and it were this, I would be thrilled every single day to light this up. And there are so few cigars that I would say that about. I'd say the same about the 80th, but that's what really did it for me, where I would actually put this in the same class as the 80th, because either of those sticks, if that's the only stick I had to smoke for the rest of my life, I would be thrilled with either of them, even though I would, I would say that the 80th is more complex and is a slightly better cigar, but both would be so unbelievably satisfying more they than are. anything else I smoke. And so that's the only reason that okay, I gave it a they time. are. Now, on your deathbed, you've mentioned if I'm dying. I, I, would, I would smoke this. This, would this sm- is on my over list. Over the 80th. I, I take either, but that's why they're both 10s for me. Wow. You would have to die twice. all right boys once is not enough nope (laughs) a 9.6 for the padron 1964 exclusivo maduro very very strong recommend yep a wonderful cigar senator thanks for uh thanks for the uh the exclusivos tonight and uh we'll see you all next week thanks so much for joining us tonight Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking, email us, loungelizardspod, P-O-D, loungelizardspod at gmail.com. Really appreciate your time, and uh, we'll see you next week.